Welcome, welcome. Thank you all for coming. So, yes, today uh, we're going to be talking about, going through, analyzing, discussing uh, our latest <coughs> instrument, the Pro 3. Um, let's see, this, this one in particular is the special edition with, a, we'll just start there, the hinged top. And we also have a standard edition which is floating around here somewhere. Yeah, Daniel's got it right there. So, same exact front panel controls, same <coughs> internal electronics. This one's just a little fancier, so it's special. So it's a special edition. Um, I guess we should start with oscillators. That's where all the sound starts. Um, on this synth, we have two analog VCOs uh, and a third digital oscillator. Uh, it also has the standard waveforms that are available on oscillator one and two, the VCOs, uh, but then it also has a ton of wavetables. Um, so these uh, oscillators were kind of from the Prophet 6 OB6 DNA, um, though we changed, uh, you know, kind of the main difference is we actually have wave shaping per shape on each oscillator. On the Prophet 6 and OB6, it was just pulse width modulation of um, the square wave, whereas we're actually doing <coughs> a certain amount of pulse width mangling on all the shapes. Um, so I'll just kind of step through that um, real quick here. So, so you those can, are VCOs? They are VCOs, yes. Uh, discrete VCOs. Um, and obviously, uh, this is the first time we've done a product that has kind of an octave switch with a fine tune, um, kind of reminiscent of those, you know, classic, uh, classic three oscillator synth designs. Uh, we'd always wanted to do one like that, and finally, kind of the concept of this synth came around. We said, yes, we want octave switches, and uh, that gives you a lot of fun stuff to play with. So. Uh, we'll just listen to some kind of boring old straight oscillator sounds and I'll go through the shape mod um, and then we'll start adding them all together and it'll get much better and putting them through filters and all that fun stuff. Uh, but, you know, boring stuff for a straight oscillator tone. So here we have a triangle wave. That's just a straight triangle. I see you have your octave tuning there. And then you have your fine tune. That goes plus and minus 700 cents, and it's very, very, um, it's very nice because you can just kind of touch in a little bit of fine tune offset. That'll be <clears throat> more wowy when we add a second oscillator, and you can kind of hear them beating off each other. Um, so we have our shape knob here that will do the modulation of the triangle waveform in this case. There's some more harmonics. Have that modulation for the triangle. You have another set of modulation for the sawtooth as well. And then square wave, just that classic pulse width. And that actually goes from 50% to 100 rather than 0 to 100 as we've normally done. Um, so that's our new oscillator. It's discrete VCO analog. Um, it's got a lot of movement uh, mm -hmm. just in, in it being discrete. Um, they're quite sensitive to temperature, humidity fluctuations. Um, so we do have a temperature-based tuning calibration that will actually look at a uh, temperature sensor inside the synth. So when you calibrate it and it's at that specific temperature, it knows where the oscillator should be, um, so, or the, the pitch and tuning. Um, so though they're, they're pretty wild, we also have slop on them. Um, since it's a modern VCO design, it's, it's got life, but it's more stable than maybe some older stuff. Um, so you can dial in slop on those as well. Um, that's just in the screen. We didn't put it on the front panel because a lot of the time you just kind of, we, it defaults to a little value of five and just sounds nice and full and big in that case. Uh, we also have wave reset. So if you need the oscillator to restart from its zero phase point uh, whenever you press it, um, that will do that. We have reset right here. Again, not a front panel control. And then you have just level and then a glide rate. Uh, and then sync as well. But all that's just right on the front panel here except for wave reset, uh, key follow on and off as well. Um, and uh, wave reset, yeah. So that's oscillator one and two. Same exact thing. Um, let's just add them together. You can kind of hear how they sound in phase. So I was saying it's nice 
with uh, the pitch off uh, the fine tune that you can just kind of push them a little bit out. Hi guys. Hey. Um, <laughs> and you can really get, you know, very simple nice beating where you can really pull them out. Or do intervals, near fifths. That's pretty nice. They feel good. I mean, they're oscillators. A little again, a little boring at first until you start integrating them into the rest of the signal chain. Uh, but we are really happy about how these uh, these ones came out. They have uh, a certain life and movement to them that really makes that fundamental building block start in a really nice place. That's just big. Um, and again, we'll listen to sounds, and you'll kind of get the impression of that. Uh, won't just be stand straight oscillators here. Um, so two oscillators. Two VCOs, and then the third oscillator, uh, as I mentioned, is digital. And then we have standard wave shapes, saw, super saw. Or that's not a standard wave shape, but saw. We have a super saw, that kind of detuned multi-saw thing. And all of these also have a shape mod, a pulse width on them as well. You have saw, pulse, triangle, sine. It's nice to have a sign, just like a nice fundamental to shove under there. And with shape mod, it actually brings up, I want to say it's uh, an octave above. So it's, it's a little more readily heard here. A little distorted, a little driven. And then we have 32 wavetables. Um, each wavetable is composed of 16 <coughs> different uh, waveforms within it that you can smoothly interpolate between. Um, so this one, uh, is actually a, a sample from one of our sound designers, Kurt Kurosaki over here. And if I can get it going right, the right speed, you'll see it actually sequential. So if you move it slower, you can kind of hear. different tables in there that you can morph between. And there's 32 of those types of different tables <coughs> in there. Uh, lots of different feelings. We, we didn't want to kind of just have standard wave tables. We went with some very different stuff as well, um, including drum samples that were chopped up into tiny little bits, which can get some really interesting results and interesting timbres out of. Um, and then, you know, all sorts of kind of harmonic sweeps. So that adds a lot of capability just at the at your front end to get a lot of complex waveforms. Um, you can get a lot of complexity out of the two VCOs. You can do FM and AM, which I'll show you how to do. Um, but you know, right out of the gate, this has a lot of complexity to it um, and adds a whole bunch of different sounds. And all of these parameters are modulatable, so you can, uh, which I'll, I'll show as well, because I kind of want to step through the signal path, and then we can talk about modulation, where you start, you know, you can basically attach anything to anything at audio rates. Um, well, let's just step through a few more of these. Here's, here's one of the drum sample ones. It's actually in, from an 808. So now it's, it's tiny little loops, but if you uh, kind of ping that with an envelope, you can basically get drum sounds out of it. Um, so. There's your, your clave right there. <laughs> Some cymbals. That's really, really fun to be able to get weird drum timbres out of a wavetable. Uh, that combined with the sequencer and some envelopes, you can actually do drums on this. And I'll, I'll play you guys some patches that are you know, intense drum-based <laughs> patches, uh, which you don't necessarily uh, think when 
you know, was going to come out of a subtractive se sequencer or synthesizer with three oscillators through filter. Um, so oscillators there. Uh, any kind of questions while we're in this area? No? We also have sync, really good sync. I'll go back to that really quick just to show you oscillator one to two. You can go sync oscillator one to two, or you can do two to three, or three to two, two to one. Um, and that will give you those kind of classic cars type sync sounds. So let me just set one of those up real quick here. triggered. Um, it's a really nice sounding uh, sync, which is actually not the easiest thing to do all the time. So we're really, really happy with that. So um, stepping back from there, we have our oscillators. Uh, you have a mixer section here where you have a level, output level for each oscillator. And then you also have a white noise source. So there's oscillator one. You have noise right there. And then you also have external audio input. Now, when you don't have anything plugged into the external audio input on the back, it's actually an analog feedback path. Um, so that's normal to the, to the plug. You break it if you connect anything into it, but you can see it's starting to sort of get some feedback. And that's, that can be really wild and fun to kind of be right at the edge of feedback and come in and out of that with the filter and stuff like that. Um, or you can plug, you know, a, a guitar or a bass into the back and use the filters. There's a there's an envelope follower uh, on this as well in this section. So you can set um, an attack and release and then you have a threshold as well for driving if you wanted to drive the sequencer from the audio input as well. So you have a lot of control just at the audio input to process audio, whether that stems from your you know recordings on your computer, run it through here, run it through the filter, you know, add some kind of analog life to that through the filters, the distortion. Um, it's a fun knob and does multiple things depending on, on where it is. And then as an envelope follower too, um, I mean, you can do some kind of crazy recursive stuff where you're actually, since you're taking the audio back into it, you can use the envelope follower of the feedback path to modulate other things, um, get kind of <coughs> complex and unwieldy in some ways. So mixer section, we all get that. Um, next big thing uh, on this synthesizer is our three filters. Um, so on the Pro 2, we had two filters, uh, the basically 2040, uh, discrete 2040 model we used in the Prophet 6, uh, and an SEM-like uh, filter is basically from, from Tom himself uh, that we developed on the OB6. Um, and then on this one, we've added a ladder filter. So classic four pole ladder, you all know that sound. We wanted to get it in here and really have a diversity in all the different filters so you can get your classic SEM sounds, you can get your classic Pro 1 sounds, you can get your classic ladder, uh, you know, three oscillator ladder sounds, uh, all on this. Um, we didn't add all the circuitry for serial to parallel operation, um, which we received a little bit of pushback for. People kind of want to say, this is the Pro 3, it should be better in every respect and have more features than the Pro 2. Um, we don't really consider this to be less good by any means. Uh, it is a unique instrument with the DNA from the Pro 2, which is, I, in, in my personal view, has a lot to do with the complexity of the sequencer, of being able to easily modulate everything, and, and go from you know very standard, you can get your, your bread and butter sounds, to really, really out there stuff. Um, so let's start with the 2040. We'll do filter sweeps. Um, step over here, and you can kind of hear, well, we get our couple oscillators set up here, some harmonics, and turn the octave down, everybody loves bass. this instrument that we've done is we uh, used a high resolution scanning of the filter cutoff pod as well so we have uh, 1024 steps of resolution in that 
uh, whereas previously we uh, mostly did <coughs> tuned to semitones. Uh, but this gives you a lot of points in between, so you can really grab the harmonics at very specific points. You can hear it's not really stepping, you can't hear anything. It's very smooth across this travel. your ears out. Um, and then we also have a filter drive. Um, so that's if you want to get a little bit more out of the oscillators into the filter. Um, and, you, and it's good to note you can actually just drive the filter from the mixer section itself. So directly from just the oscillators by turning them up all the way, you'll get some drive out of the filter. So you know, starting at 50% or something like that is going to give you, and it, it depends how much signal you have go, uh, going through as well, how many oscillators active. But you'll generally get, if you have two oscillators, a cleaner sound at 50% uh, rather than 100% where you start to get a little more drive. And then you can drive that even more with the filter drive as well. It's just a, another gain stage into the filter. So check that out. Why do we have three filters? Because they all behave differently. They all sound differently. They, they have a unique flavor. So um, it's going to work differently in each one. You kind of feather where you need it. Um, let me do the sweep here with our ladder. A little more resonance. sound. Um, it's good to note, you may have noticed, uh, that as I turned up the resonance here, we didn't get a drop in volume of the pass band of the audio. Let me step back over here. So what we've done, uh, and this is in the screen, it's not on the front panel, uh, but there's a ladder uh, resonance compensation. So as resonance comes up, uh, typically on the traditional ladder filters, the pass band is reduced. And so you'll get a really big peak at the resonant peak, but then you'll kind of lose your bass and the, the body from the rest of the sound. And we decided that we wanted to be able to do kind of the classic sound without compensation, as well as kind of a more modern sound, which is a little you know, punchier, beefier. It's going to um, keep all the body of, of the sound there. So I can switch that on and off. Get the sound. So the resonance up here. And then as I turn it on and off, obviously there's big change there in volume in the pass band. So if you want more of a classic old school ladder sound, you're probably going to want to keep the ladder uh, uh, res compensation off, but we wanted to leave that as a choice. Um, and it's, it's great. Just in the screen, right there, very easily. And then we also have the SEM filter. So the Tom Oberheim state variable filter, super unique, uh, has a really distinct sound. I mean, very much along it's distinct as the latter is, as the 2040 <coughs> is, um, and ubiquitous in music. Uh, you, you've heard it before. So here's the low pass here. And that's a two-bowl two -bowl filter, so you're going to have a little less cutoff on that one. Um, and if you really crank up the resonance, it almost gets in self, to self-resonance, but not quite. And the, the SEM has this wonderful ability to really grab the harmonics of the sound and in this really pleasing way. is continuously uh, variable between low pass and notch and notch and, uh, and notch and high pass. So you have your low pass going into notch. So that's going to give you a very unique sound, notchy sound as you're turning the cutoff. It's reducing uh, frequencies around the resonant point in a notch. 
and then you can go from notch all the way to high pass. modulate all of this stuff. Uh, we also have a bandpass button here and so that will switch the entire filter into a bandpass mode. So basically the opposite of notch where you have a bell at a specific point and the pass bands at the low and high end are reduced. Um, and you can modulate between the normal mode and the bandpass if you want with an LFO with the slider. So it's not just fixed on and off. Uh, we actually have the ability to modulate between those underneath the hood. Um, a couple other things we have in the filter section in the screen, uh, key tracking. So if you want to key track the filter along with your keys, you can do that very easily. And then you have your bandpass notch there. But basically everything's on the front panel except for the key tracking and the ladder res compensation. So that's just good to know that that's there. Um, any questions about this section? Filters. You all got them. You need them. We got them. The three of them. Um, <laughs> And yes, discrete analog. So we got discrete analog VCOs. We have discrete analog filters. It makes things sound good. We, we can sit here and talk about why and what's the reasoning. It doesn't really matter. We all know it just sounds better. Um, and then we have our VCA output here. So that's our analog signal path except for the, the digital oscillator. Oscillators, filter, VCA, and envelope right here. So there's your meat and potatoes. That's the most basic sound path you can take. Um, we also have, uh, in terms of the VCA as well, we have a tuned feedback. Uh, this is one of Dave's wonderful inventions that he added to the Evolver at first. Uh, it's a digital feedback path. It takes the output of the VCA, feeds it back pre-filter, but it actually is tuned, so it follows what note you're playing by changing the delay time in that feedback path. Um, so that can get from kind of very warm and subtle to really screechy and wild. Um, you could use it kind of as this wonderful flanger type effect. <laughs> so let's just take a listen to that and I'll show you how that tracks notes here. Hopefully not blow you up. We are 2040. You can hear a little bit depth there. And this is actually a, a feedback of positive and negative amounts as well. It's going to be very responsive to whatever the filter is, whatever content you're putting in. So it's, it's kind of one of those things where you can't just turn it up in every case and it's going to do the same thing. It's, it's alive and it's moving with the rest of everything. So you're constantly kind of controlling all these little bits to, to get the sound you want, to get that, that beefy, wonderful sound. changing with the tuning of the synth. So that's really nice that your feedback follows what you're playing. Um, and then you can go in negative amounts. also change the bass tuning. So right now we're at a, a feedback tuning value of zero. So that's very kind of flanger sounding in a way. Really, really cool. By changing the delay time and the feedback path. Super unique effect. Um, really, really I, you know, it, it's so unique and it's it's kind of wild that David's just like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, put this in here. Um, and in that same respect with the Evolver, he added the, we added the grunge in. And what that does is basically takes whatever's in the uh, feedback buffer and will clip and, and swap um, signals. I forget exactly uh, if it's decimating or something else more specifically, but it's grungy. It's distorted. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, so I'll try not to blow you up and turn that on. But at some point, we're going to get up into the grunge. So you get that, that 
wave folding distortion. And as you can hear, it's, it's kind of on the edge and it's gonna change because the oscillators are just kind of moving a little bit. Their VCOs, they're moving a little bit. The filter is discrete. It's taking in, you know, all this stuff. And then you have the feedback path. So it's, 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 an, it's a very alive. It's, it's an instrument. It's something that you're, you know, even though uh, a lot of people think synthesizers are, you know, they're not, they don't give you feedback like a violin, like a, a bassoon, a wind instrument. I mean, I, I contend that this is very much that same way where you have to understand what's happening with the instrument and use your ears and understand, you know, the, the physics of what are going on to, to catch these really on the edge. That's pretty gritty and wonderful uh, in the right context. I mean, it's not that you want to turn that on all the time, but it, it's really nice. Um, so that's basically the signal path. Um, and what makes all of this even better is modulation. Um, so for modulation, uh, we have three LFOs off to the right, uh, left here. We have a triangle, sawtooth, reverse sawtooth, square, and then a random, like a sample and hold. Those are easily um, assignable to any front panel control, pretty much, by just holding the oscillator, or holding the LFO, or its destination, and just turning it on. So, uh, we'll do that to, let's say, oscillator one, fine tune. And turn up our amount here. of oscillator one that's giving it some movement. Um, now say we also wanted to assign that same uh, LFO to another destination, we can do that within the modulation matrix. Um, so three, three LFOs, they can be set ind independently assigned anywhere. If I wanted to say assign that same LFO to a filter cutoff, you know, traditional stuff, you would just hold source in the modulation matrix, press LFO one, hold destination, turn cutoff or whatever other parameter, and turn it up by some amount. So what we've uh, basically done is, is established a, a patch cable in, inside of our modulation matrix. So the LFO is now modulating fine tune on one, as well as filter cutoff. And it can get sent to as many destinations as you have available, uh, or slots as you have available within the modulation matrix. Um, the modulation matrix is 32 <clears throat> slots deep. So it's the most modulation we've added to any instrument. Um, and you can assign, again, this is LFOs, they run up to audio rates. Bring that up a little bit. Bring it down. Or you could also just use an oscillator uh, as a modulator. Our, our, uh, we're running at high speed modulation, so I'll just assign oscillator one to our cutoff here, add some amount of modulation, turn this down a little bit. That's oscillator one, modulating the filter in addition to LFO one as well. Um, point being, audio rate modulation, you can do FM between oscillators, you can do uh, which maybe I'll just show you right here. So I'll turn down to triangle waves, and I'll take oscillator two, source, turn oscillator two, destination, oscillator one, course pitch. There's our triangle. Now as I turn it up, That's going to change with whatever wave shape you have. So that's a pretty awesome sound. <laughs> we like FM. We like high rate FM at that. Um, so that's really cool. And then you can also use uh, oscillator three. Um, so I, I, I noted we have these wavetables in there. Uh, you can also turn that into an additional LFO if you want. And that allows you to use very complex LFO waveforms to modulate other parameters. Um, so stuff you wouldn't necessarily get out of an LFO directly without kind of combining them in ways. Um, and let's maybe just do a quick example of that. Assign oscillator three to filter frequency. We all know 
what that sounds like. I'll turn it up by some amount here. And right now, Oscillator 3 has a sawtooth, so you hear an opening. Now if we go to a more com complex type waveform, let's just grab one at random. So that's very slow, but you can hear all those ins and outs are just complex waveforms. So there's another way to provide uh, complexity to your modulation from kind of more uncertain shapes. Uh, it's really, really interesting. Uh, modulation, 32 slots here. Uh, filter envelope here. Two auxiliary envelopes here. Uh, the envelopes uh, for the VCA filter and aux envelopes are DADSR, so that's delay, attack, uh, decay, sustain, release, and they're also looping as well. So you can loop between the attack of, and delay, attack, and decay portions of that, um, that. So if you run out of LFOs here, you can make a rudimentary triangle wave, uh, unipolar triangle wave, using an aux envelope or any of the other uh, envelopes. Um, you have your velocity on off here for the filter and uh, VCA envelopes. You have uh, velocity in the screen for the auxiliary envelopes. Um, and that's like your, you have your signal path, you have your modulators. So now you can attach everything together. You can basically do virtual patch cables, 32 virtual patch cables with an atten attenuator on the cable itself. So you can set the amount of modulation. Um, Oh, and I've got analog distortion on the output. That's another, another thing in the signal path we've thrown in there. Um, any questions at this point? No? I'm, I'm just doing such a great job that everything is so understood. <laughs> it's amazing. Great. Maybe the, the FM modulation, is that true zero? Uh, no, it's, like, it's exponential FM. Um, so we're, we're, it's not through zero. Um, we may look at, uh, you know, whether it's possible to do linear implementation of that. Uh, we had linear and exponential on the Pro 2, but that was much easier to do because they're digital oscillators um, rather than analog discrete oscillators. So um, just by the nature of them being VCOs, they're a little less stable. So it's, they're not quite as useful as digital oscillators doing FM in that way. Um, but, you know, not off the table. There's lots of th things we like to consider and, and stuff that... You know, maybe if we couldn't get into this product, would make it into a future product. So we're always, always listening about that stuff. Yes. So this reminds me of a question I had. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you mean by discrete when you say discrete oscillator? Discrete. discrete so it's not a uh, like a chip-based thing. It's it's mm -hmm. out of individual components like transistors, resistors, capacitors. Um, so you can get a lot of great uh, oscillators on chips, uh, filters on chips, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's just that. Uh, the discrete electronics, they're, again, it's this, this extreme sensitivity to temperature differences and humidity differences that the, and, and the components themselves not being you know, exactly the same. There's tolerances in all those components, so there's a little more life in, in those discrete designs. Um, though you can, you know, we don't want them to be unusable, um, so that's why we do the temperature calibration. Um, you just want, you want enough of it. Feel good. And then we also have the slop feature uh, that will, you know, can actually pull it out really, really bad. So I'll turn up the slop and you can kind of hear how that behaves between two oscillators. So that's kind of like an artificial randomness we've added, and that's just going to wander around. And you can dial in however much of that you want. Is, is the point, and that's, that's a really cool thing. Um, we have two effects uh, as well. I, I, I kind of went over, I, I completely passed over distortion and effects when talking about the signal path. Um, oh, I guess, any uh, more questions? Oh. One more, uh, so yeah. there's envelope amount? Is yes. Negative, positive? Uh, negative and positive on the filter envelope, positive on the VCA, because negative right. modulation, yeah, right. but doesn't mean anything. And then you have... Is that, third, is that a third envelope I see? Uh, this is uh, two so auxiliary envelopes. Oh, oh, okay. So it's, it's encoders up here, and you can switch between the two. And actually, those, those uh, similar to LFOs, are really easy to assign by just holding the aux button and turning whatever control, and it'll automatically assign. So we have dedicated destinations from the LFOs, uh, from the aux envelopes, but then you can also access them through the uh, modulation matrix cool. as well. Uh, one other question was, uh, what were the LFO shapes? 
Uh, LFO shapes are triangle, sawtooth, reverse sawtooth, uh, square, and random. And actually, uh, that bring back to the LFO, I, I forgot to say they're syncable to clock, so you get uh, synced clocked values. And then you also have a slew and wave reset and phase. So wave reset will reset the LFO to its zero crossing every time you press a key. With wave reset on, and you can change the phase of that, so you can start at you know, 32% phase of that LFO or 64 halfway through. Um, and then you can also slew it. So why don't we take a listen to that, for example. Uh, our trusty cutoff modulation. It's a little boring, but it's easy to hear and everybody gets it. Um, so let me do that. Turn this up. Right, so there's our hard, hard edge there. Now I can turn up slew. signal. So you're just flattening it out eventually. Um, and that's all per, per LFO as well. So th those are a couple things that are under the hood uh, that aren't available, but it's kind of one of those set it, forget it uh, type things. So we like to keep those in. Uh, to come back to the VCLs, mm -hmm. can you comment on the architecture? Um, not more than they are from kind of the, the Prophet 6 OB6 design. Uh, I'm not a hardware engineer in that sense, so I, I, would, I would hesitate to say too much about them okay. without knowing the intricacies of that. Um, are there specific yeah. questions you had about? Um, yeah, but maybe they're more for a harsh <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, absolutely. Um, any, any, anything else? Yes. Um, there seems to be a lot of threes. Is that uh, the conscious design choice? Like the Pro 3 has three oscillators, three yes. LFOs, three filters. Yes. Yeah, it was, I mean, not, not, we, we weren't like stuck to that, but yeah, when you have Pro 3, three oscillators, three filters, it makes sense. And it, it, it's, I mean, it, yes, right, you have, you have to have limitations in design. So even something as silly as that is really helpful to just guide the design process to say, okay, Pro 3, let's do threes of things. Um, so it, it was a design decision. It wasn't like we have to do this, but it just happened and made sense to be like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we also have a couple other employees here too. So it was a nice coincidence. Yeah, it was a nice coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody else at the moment? Is there a glide? No, there is glide. glide. Yeah, okay. you have on off. Out there on the left. Yeah, okay. and then glide right here. And you also have a hold. So if I just want to hold something, you hold it there. We'll get there eventually. It just turns out. Um, so, and that's per oscillator, you, the, the glide knob actually does all three glide rates, but it brings up a screen and you can actually set different glide per oscillator. So you could have one gliding and other ones just jumping. Um, and then we have a couple different uh, glide modes as well. So one that'll only glide when you're playing legato, uh, or one that glides all the time. Um, and fixed rate or fixed time. Okay, and those are in the menu? Those are, um, yeah, in the menu here. Uh, some other things that are in the menu uh, that you know you need to have on a synth to some degree, uh, your key mode. So whether you want to you do key priority, low key priority. Turn this, let's go back to a basic patch. And we'll go to a key mode, low note. So now we'll do priority, but I can't trigger above it. High key mode, not below. And then last key mode. And then you have envelope re-trigger on off as well. So if you want the envelopes to be re-triggered on every key press, uh, or whether you want it to only re-trigger when you're not playing legato. Um, so that, that can all be set there. And then uh, we have a, a gate source. So you can gate from the gate the VCA from the keyboard or from the external audio input. Um, so you can actually gate from, from an external input, maybe like a drum machine, a clave from your favorite drum machine, whatever. Um, and then you have scales as well. So we have alternate tunings, and that's per patch, or you can set it globally. And there's, I want to say, oh, we've upped the number. We now have 65 alternate tunings. So lots of stuff. And you can load those yourself. You can make them uh, in Scala, uh, e export those, convert them to a midding tu uh, .mts file, the MIDI, MIDI tuning system, I think, Sysix, and then you, you can load them in. 
So you can load, you can whatever you want into there for tuning. Can you do micro tuning? Well? Yeah, that, that's what it is. Yeah. Mic yeah. Oh. So you can you can do all that. Uh, we have, you know, let's see. Here's our <coughs> quarter tone, nineteen tone, thirty one. We have a bunch of stuff. The Pythagorean C. You know, and then you can design those all yourself. Nice. For brilliant musicians like you who know how to use micro tuning, <laughs> it's very helpful. Um, screens. Pitch wheel range, that's another one. You can go uh, up, up to an octave, or down, up to two octaves. Um, you can set that independently. Uh, mod wheel is assigned through the modulation matrix, all the wheels. You know, I, I kind of showed some of the modulation matrix stuff. Uh, again, really easy. If I want to assign a wheel to something or a slider, we have a touch sensitive slider here with a latch. Hold source, tap the slider. Hold destination, turn the knob. Whether that's an envelope stage, uh, wave shape, the shape mod, all of that's modulatable. And it's just so easy to set up. It's really, really nice. How do you nice. disconnect the modulation? Uh, you just go into the modulation matrix, and you can either just set the amount back to zero. You have this dedicated encoder that'll give you the amount of the modulation on the selected slot. Or in the screen, you can just turn off, Okay. You can just go you can off. So, so you can assign them. You can get rid of them. Or uh, you know, if you misassigned one, you just, if you keep holding the destination, you can turn it to whatever one you want it to be on that slot. So you always have deep navigation of all the front panel controls on encoders. Uh, but there's, uh, you know, again, we're doing the, the high resolution scanning of the cutoff pot of various other pots. So you have a lot of ability to get you, even you very can fine values. You can see every parameter. Yeah, as soon as you update a parameter, it's going to show in the display. Um, and then all within each section, so this is the oscillator section, you always have these four tabs, and these four tabs are gonna show you everything in that section, and then the encoders are gonna reference whatever parameter is shown directly below it. So if you wanna get in very, very specific, yeah. you can, yeah. Um, anybody else? You guys, you guys feeling good? I swear we'll play some music. You guys can get up here and play music. Um, <laughs> so a lot to talk through. Um, dual effects. Um, really nice effects. We have BBD delay, DDL, a straight delay. We have chorus. We have flanger. We have phaser. We have a high pass filter. We have ring mod. We have a rotating speaker, which is like a Leslie model with distortion and mic distance. And then on uh, effect two, you have those all those same effects and super flip, uh, which is our big reverb type sound. And that's that's really really awesome. Another employee. Hello. <laughs> if, you have, if you have Leslie, do you also have stereo outs there? Um, so we have stereo outs, so it's mono uh, through the VCA into the distortion, and then that splits out mono into stereo, so you still have stereo effects. And then you can pan the output as well. Um, so lots lots of really good effects in here. You guys know how effects sound, so I'll, we'll, we'll go through them, or you guys can play with them later. Um, those are all modulatable as well, which is pretty wild. So. You know, if you wanted to pick up, uh, say, a BBD, this will be obvious. Assign our LFO to time, right? And then we'll turn that up. Let's turn up our feedback. So all of that stuff is modulatable at audio rates as well. If I want to send an oscillator to modulate time, I'll do that to that. We'll turn off this modulation. And turn this up. There, you kind of hear it. It's going so fast that it's not changing so much, but it's kind of moving it a little bit there. Um, so that's, you know, audio path, basic modulation, and then I, I <coughs> even talked about one of my favorite sections on the synth, the sequencer. This thing is deep. Uh, it is, uh, you have four sequences per patch. Each of these sequences is 16 steps long, and you have 16 tracks. Um, the first three tracks are reserved for notes, duration, and ratchet. So those are always kind of fixed to those things, but then you have 13 tracks that you can assign to anything. Um, and you can also link these together so you can have up to a 64 step sequence. You have sequencer direction playback, so forward, reverse, forward, reverse, like a ping pong, and then random. You have a reset button that'll reset uh, your, your track back to one whenever you want. And um, let me set something up here and get out of our. Do you have a reset input? 
Reset input? Reset input? No, it's just, just on the button itself. Um, you do have a couple different modes, though. So you have a normal mode where it will just play when you, when you press the play button. You have a gated mode where it'll gate the sequencer on for as long as you're holding a key. And you have a trigger mode as well. Um, that'll just step every time you hit a key. Um, and the sequencer can also be addressed directly uh, from the audio input. So you can drive the sequencer from an audio input. You can drive the sequencer from CV input. So if you have, I, I didn't even mention, on the back here we have four CV in and outs. Those are all running at audio rates as well, but you can uh, send LFOs and oscillators out into your Eurorack system. You can uh, take oscillators or LFOs or envelopes or different modulations into the synth from it, or you can even just drive the sequencer from a clock base uh, in your Euro or other modular environment. Um, and the sequencer is super easy to use. So let me, let me get in here with some, some patch. Sure. And I just press record. So now I've just rec recorded a 16 step sequence. Uh, play. Pretty cool. Now if I wanted to record modulation, again, I said I have 13 tracks I can freely record modulation to. Super easy. Press play, hold record. And now that modulation is recorded across those tracks and I can see it right here. If I wanted to change the modulation on a specific step, even while in playback, I can just hold that step and turn the knob to whatever value I want it to be at. It'll always the, the modulation always plays relative to the pot's physical location. So that's really handy. It'll it's it's not just gonna jump away from wherever the, the pot moves, it's gonna stay with it. And if I wanted to record another track, just hold record, turn that. So there's our I've now recorded that parameter in there. Um, you can, on any of the tracks, you can make rests by just pressing off. So now those steps are inactive. Or you can tie steps together. So if you wanted to set just a, a fixed level for any number of steps, and that's super easy and, and intuitive. You hold the first step, you want to tie it to the last step. And that works in the note track as well. So if I go to track select, back to our note track, I can set some ties in there. And we have some handy, fun multi. I, I don't think anybody's really referenced this since we started talking about it, but we have multicolor LEDs in yeah. here to make it easier to see. Yeah. Um, so that, that's just a nice way. Now I look at this track and I know, oh, these steps are tied. And uh, so let's just play that. So that's different. You can turn off a tie by just pressing the first step of the tie. It'll pop, up, pop off. And then you can also set duration of steps. So we, um, when the sequencer's on, we gate everything to 50%. Now you can also set the gate on any step to 100%. So let's say for this tie, when, you, when we hear it, it'll stop right there. Now I want it to play all the way through. I'll just turn up our duration. We also have slew per track. A little harder to hear on this patch specifically, but that's slewing the track. And then you have ratchets as well. And you can set those either by, you know, in the screen, everything in the screen as well, or you hold the step. You can hear that one, ratcheted. The ratchet's going to subdivide the step and re-trigger the note a number of times. So you can do on step one right now, for the length of three steps, it's actually playing five notes. Um, and that's really cool. That's unique to the SEM. Uh, really, really fun and can give you some, some nice movement and stuff. Um, let's see here. We have swing, clock divide. Uh, this is a continuous swing as well. Previously, we've had kind of a fixed swing level. Swung now. You can make it faster. BPM, where you can do clock divide, make it slower. You can tap tempo. Um, you have uh, slew again per track. So uh, when we recorded, say, the cutoff track here, it's stepped values. 
but you could also slew between those values if you wanted. You just turn this button on for whatever track you have selected. Um, and then you have a couple cool things. Sequence lock. So if I wanted to try this uh, sequence on any other program, I'd turn this on and play via the playback. And now I can just go to any other program and it'll play this sequence. It's not the best sequence I've ever made, but for illustration, here we go. Reset a track length by holding the button, pressing reset. So now I have a seven step sequence here. Now I can actually go into other tracks. If you change the reset point the first time on the note track, <coughs> all the other tracks follow it. Now, if I wanted to make this one 12 steps, that's cut off is now 12, and the note track is seven steps. And now I can set independent reset points on every single track. So you can have these evolving modulations that never resolve, or you know, notes for that matter. That's a really cool thing. So you can have you know, seven wrapping around 12. We're in random right now, but we're randomly stepping through 12 steps here. Now we're randomly stepping through seven steps here on the note tracks. So a lot of versatility in that. And if I wanted to reset those all back to 16, I just hold my sequence button and press reset, and now everything's reset back to its maximum length. Um, and I was diverging from talking about Q Program. Q Program is pretty cool. It'll actually allow you to play a sequencer, cue a program. I can go to any program here, I'm sure to this one, and well, I should probably be. It. And it'll wait till the end of the sequence before going on to the next patch. So if you were synced, they would all stay in time. That's kind of a nice way if you want to uh, move fluidly between sequences and two patches without ever stopping the sequencer. Uh, that's, that's a fun thing. Um, so really, really fun sequencer. Uh, sequencer can also address CV outputs. So you can use the sequencer as CV output. You can uh, send a clock pulse to the CVs from the sequencer as well. We also have destinations for MIDI node output. So you can send MIDI, there's two MIDI outputs on this. You can send MIDI notes out one output or the two output on channels one through 16. Um, you can also do MIDI CCs out of the sequencer as well and address those. So a lot of power in this area to modulate everything and work with everything. The CV outputs, uh, you have put switch inputs. Um, that's all the features. I'm starting to lose you here. So let's play some sounds, right? I should have, probably should have started there. Um, I'm just going to run through maybe some sounds I made because I'm more familiar with them. Um, in terms of com complex sequencers, this is kind of my favorite. Uh, it's called Pot Tucker. It's like kind of like instant Pot Tucker sounds. So I'll just step in, press play. I'm quieter. I have some. So that's using oscillator 3 as the drum source, <laughs> using some of those wavetable oscillators. Um, well, kind of a drum source. Oscillator 2, I believe, is being used as a kick by just pinging that with an envelope and keeping that at a, at a uh, fixed frequency. Um, so not necessarily a patch you would expect to hear out of this thing. Um, that's, that's my fun, you know, make it crazy. Oh, yeah. 
we also have a paraphonic mode. Um, so you can address each oscillator separately with a note. So you have three notes of paraphony. <coughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> um, so that all goes through a single filter. Uh, one interesting thing we do under the hood, actually, is when paraphonic mode is on, we take the VCA envelope and mo automatically modulate the output level of each oscillator. So you actually have volume articulation per oscillator, even though it's a paraphonic uh, path through the filter in VCA. Um, and some people say that's true polyphony. I, I don't want to start in any arguments. We call it paraphonic. It's, it's paraphonic. Um, so here, we'll play a little paraphonic patch here. I mean, I, I'm like, I see people's eyes and they're like, oh, it's so many features, I can't keep my head around it all. There are more features, um, as, as Kurt pointed out, so we'll talk about that one. Um, this one is paraphonic sequencer mode. In this mode, each oscillator gets its dedicated sequencer track. So, in this case... <laughs> that is when you're on track one, you press record, you can just play chords. Great chords, I know. Um, so now we have those chords entered. If I wanted to just do a mono line on oscillator one, I could just do this. Now I'm going to go to track two, and I can record an independent line just for oscillator two. Uh, and for track three, for that matter. And they, don't, they don't have to be the same length as well. So now... It's pretty cool. Forward and backwards. Record octave switches. sequencing as well. Very, very fun. Really, really cool and unique feature. Um, so I guess I just, I, are there specific sounds, specific things people want to hear out of this, or maybe you all want to come well, up and check it out? something about the sequencer, you can, you can um, make it, uh, what, 64 steps? Yeah, or you can make it 64 seven. steps. And we're, we're actually going to make this a little easier. Right now, um, in the screen, you could change the sequence mode to extended, and now they all light up, and I can do up to 64 steps here. Um, so that last sequence uh, that I was playing um, originally had 64 steps. So that's how you do that, and you can just record through every one. And we're going to be changing the behavior of that just to make it easier to do, so you don't have to get into the screen. Um, so that is soon to come as well. Um, any other questions? Sequencer? Anything else around this? Uh, how did you engage the paraphonic mode? Uh, uh, we, have, we have a paraphonic button right here. Oh, okay. So paraphonic right there. And then you also have a paraphonic sequencer mode. So yet another feature, if you can handle any more features. Um, if you have paraphonic sequence mode off and you play the oscillators with the sequencer, it'll rotate through each uh, oscillator. Or if you have paraphonic sequence on, then you can play as, as, as chords. But otherwise, it'll kind of monophonic. If you don't have paraphonic sequencer mode on and paraphonic mode on, um, it'll rotate through the, the each oscillator separately, which is something I think uh, more pop, most popular on the monopoly. Um, it's a really cool feature, so you can do, I'll go to a basic patch, I'll set different tunings for each oscillator, any different shapes, turn paraphonic on, turn up all the oscillators,
which also reminds me, we have an arpeggiator up here. <laughs> right? So that's pretty cool. Um, and yet, another thing you can do is, if the arpeggiator is on, and you are in a gated or a trigger mode sequencer, you can arp and record modulation to the sequencer. So you can do your recording modulation with the arpeggiator playing back on top. So that's really, really cool too. Some, uh, you know, filter modulation. So how about... Oops. I pressed record with my hand. Uh, here we go. So now we have modulation going on of oscillator tuning of the filter. We could even, um, you know, for, for the diehard modulation people, you can do recursive modulation through the modulation matrix. So you can set a modulation source with no amount and then use, say, a sequencer to modulate just that amount per step of some modulation set in here. Or you can, you know, use the other sources to basically recursively set modulation within the modulation matrix. It's a killer synth. Um, it's really, really deep. It can do <laughs> wonderful things very simply and straightforward. Uh, my, my goal in here, knowing you guys are diehard synthesists, is to talk about basically every feature, and even I forgot some of them. So, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> um, you know, that's a lot of talking, so I just want, you know, people to come up and play, um, you know, unless there's, there's any more questions. Comments, is concerns. The, is the CV out um, a mod destination? CV out is a mod destination. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so you can send you can send LFOs, envelopes, oscillators directly out into Excellent. your modular. And actually, before uh, it was set up here, we uh, we have, we're clocking Steve's rig from the sequencer destination here. So we were just pinging his rotating clock divider with a uh, for the sequencer, and that was driving some you know drum modules he had over here, and it just synced right up. It's perfect. Great. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Is every component of all the effects modulatable? Like each little individual yes. function? So you have a mix and you have three parameters and they're all modulatable. Okay. Um, that's, that's really cool. Again, LFOs, sequencer, whatever you want. Um, I'll, this is kind of a synth where it's, it's fundamental tone. Not that I've been really showing that directly because I've just been talking about everything. It's fundamental tone is just really rich and good and you can have very simple patches, single oscillator through a filter, no effects, it sounds really nice. And then you can go really, really, really deep and do these crazy modulations or you can hook it up and control other synths from it. Um, so it's really kind of, a lot of the synths we make have a depth to it that you can grow with. Uh, I really like that. So, as soon as you might be uh, getting a little bored with how a certain thing, you know, we, we all have our, our tricks and the things we do over and over again, and then you get a little bored with that and you have to find new stuff, there's so much new stuff in here, it'd be really hard to get bored with the synthesizer, or any of our other synthesizers for that matter, with deep modulation matrix uh, matrices. It allows you to, to do some really interesting stuff if you're willing to think a little bit differently and maybe try something unexpected and explore. Uh, those happy accidents are, are often the best, the best things. Um, so, yeah. A anybody else? No? And the, the CV out, it's also CV in too. So yeah, it, for so, CV in. And so that applies to each module, any modulation too. Right? Correct, yeah, it's oh, just, okay. just general purpose through the modulation matrix. So you can select CV in and assign it to anything in here. Awesome. Yeah, totally, I mean, crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, and even, again, like, since the sequencer can be driven by the external audio, uh, you can, and this is a feedback path, you can kind of drive the sequencer from the feedback path, the output, so you have to seed it with something, and then it'll kind of start running and jumbling, and uh, you can do some really out there stuff with it. Uh, super fun. But again, just also really, really wonderful, wonderful straight. if you guys want, uh, or, or you guys can come up here and just start playing. I mean, that, that, I think that's better. Just come up, check it out. All Sound right. good? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Yeah.